Hi, welcome to First Impressions. My name is Carl Lee. And I'm Jason Headley. So First Impressions is where we give you a literal first impression of a comic book, a video game, or a movie. And we tell you what we think about it right after we actually read it, play it, or watch it. And so we're going to give it a rating between 1 and 10 based on cover, art, and story. And we're going to show you what we got this week. Alright. Bling! Armor Hunters number one. Um, I'm not caught up with X Men War, so I didn't read it. Uh, but the art looks great. Doug Bathory and uh, Rob Vendetti. If you did read it, let us know what you thought. We yeah. did. Read it. Batman Eternal ten. I thought it was the weakest of the series so far out of the ten. Um, though there are only two parts I really actually thought was worth reading that I enjoyed about it was uh, uh, Julia Pennyworth her little bit and then. Um, uh, Stephanie Brown's a little bit. Yeah. I didn't think it was the weakest, but I do love Stephanie Brown, so her parts definitely stuck out to me. And it was pretty slow as an issue goes. I didn't really like the art. I didn't like the art either. It Get rid of this artist. It didn't flow with the whole rest of the series so yeah. far. I love John Lehman. He can stay, but whoever this artist is, they can go. So what'd you rate it? I rated it... I have no idea at this point. An 8.0. <laughs> 7.3. Great. Deadly Hands of Kung Fu. Um, this is old, but we decided to pick it up because I don't know, I heard some things that might be good and I always wanted to support, um, you know, under, t uh, I always wanted to support titles that are like, you know, has other Asians in it, but I don't want to support if it's not good either, you know, that doesn't help anything, I don't think. Um, but I thought it was actually a very decent story, it's like James Bond meets Bruce Lee, so it was kind of slick and it was an easy read. It wasn't like anything new, but it was decent, it was good, but the art is kind of odd to me because um, I'm familiar with this, with this guy's art. The artist by uh, Tang En Huat. Uh, I believe that's how you say his name, I don't know, but I think he's the same guy who did uh, this reincarnation of Doom Patrol before and his art was very, very stylized and I actually liked it and in this I did not, I don't know what he did to his style, but it does not look anything like it, it looks totally washed out, but it was okay. Yeah. Uh, for me, the art was okay. The writing was okay. My problem with this book um, is that it, it would be great if Iron Fist wasn't so much better. Iron Fist is a similar story, um, but the writing's better, the art's better, everything about it is better. So I gave this one a 7.0. I gave it a 7. 3. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> the Empty Man, uh, Cullen Bunn. His new title and uh, Vanessa R. Del Rey. I think it's great that there's so many new female artists that are being represented yeah, in these comics. Um, um, I, this is a impulse buy for me because it's Colin Bunn and he's kind of rising up in Marvel and uh, at first I looked at it, it actually didn't look too interesting to me but I kind of got the sense that oh it's like a boogeyman story but then when I read it it was actually really really interesting it, it has to do with like a virus, some kind of viral yeah. thing that's very popular in comics nowadays and movies uh, but it's also got this boogeyman element to it and uh, to me it felt like there was lots of intriguing, unknown things about it for me, and I think that's a really key thing for um, this type of genre, yeah. the unknown. Yeah, really cool as a horror story. I wasn't actually going to read this one and just kind of read it on a whim today. Um, the really interesting horror story, uh, they really got the creepy vibe in there. I really like the artwork. I like the writing. I don't know that I like the cliffhanger at the end, but we'll see what happens next time and see if that actually, if they go through with that. What'd you give it? Oh, uh... 8.5. Yeah, I give it an 8.5 as well. Yeah, I just thought that there was one part that was unnecessary. Is that that guy in the water, why didn't the mom shut up the water? Yeah, I agree. That was stupid. Figment. Figment, number one. Alright, so this definitely was my favorite book this week. Um, I really, really enjoyed Figment. I um, I love Jim Zub as a writer. I think he's fantastic. Uh, he can be more, more books. That's fine with me. Uh, basically, the idea of this story is it's kind of an old Disney story where it takes place in 1910. The scientist is trying to create something that kind of uses imagination power um, to fuel things, and he ends up bringing his imaginary friend to life. And then he, at the very end, falls into this void, into the unknown. Really, really fun writing, fun story, great artwork. Um, I loved it. What do you think? Cool. Um... You know, I, I didn't really want to get it at first, but I love that idea of imagination. I remember seeing it at Epcot a long time ago, and it's a really, really old ride, and I think it's great that they put this big-ass story behind it to bring it, you know, up to life and back to life, because it was a really simple story in, in the ride. And um, I give it an 8. I give it a 9.5. Infinity Man and the Forever People! All right, what do you think? I think you should talk about this one first. All right, well... You know what? I'm not such a fan of the art. Um, I think maybe he tried to make it very Kirby style. Um, I thought it was kind of weird that all the characters were introduced all at once 
or that's what it seemed like to me. But then eventually when I was reading, I actually liked it better. I was, I, I am now very, very interested in the rest of these characters and how they will develop in the future and very interested in meeting Infinity Man. And uh, the only thing I really kind of didn't like was Mantis at the end. The, his whole character introduction of him and it kind of felt like, the series kind of felt like real world meets Gen 13 meets, well, forever people, I guess. It, it just has that vibe to me that it could be kind of fun, you know? So I'm kind of looking forward to it, though, you yeah. know, I'm um, sure. I just want to say, this book is so bad, it literally just broke our backdrop just to talk about it. Um, for me, I didn't like anything about this book. I didn't like the cover, I didn't like the artwork, I didn't like the story. I thought they had some really creative ideas that were all missed opportunities. Um, that they didn't take advantage of in any way. Um, I was so bored by this book, I almost didn't finish reading the first issue mm. because I just hated it so much. What did you give it? 7-6. So. I, I gave it a 3.0. Oh my god. <laughs> JLU, Justice League United. Part du. Well, not part. But anyways, um, you know, I think I've been liking uh, Mike McCone's art more in this now. I feel like I'm starting to get used to his art with these characters. Yeah. And I feel like I'm also enjoying the story more. Um, I definitely like this issue more than the past two issues. Um, yeah. I mean, I think you? he's just drawing the characters better. Yeah. Um, I really like that we got a lot of backstory. I like that it was so funny. There was a lot of banter between, you know, Green Arrow and Animal Man that was really, really funny. Yes. Um, that was yeah, awesome. I, um, I loved that we had kind of a last time on that played off as a joke, but it also kind of caught us caught up. Yeah. Um, from Supergirl. I think my only real complaint about this issue is that I don't like the cover. This cover is boring to me. Try harder next time. Fail. Fail cover. Oh, what'd you give it? What'd you give ah! it? What'd you give this? I gave it an 8.5. Yeah, I gave it an 8.5 eight as well. And I like it just feels like a bigger um, extension of the DCU, and I feel like bigger things are going to be coming that are all DCU-based, you know? Yeah, round, I think my favorite joke in this, by the way, was one of the characters was like, do all the superheroes live in Canada? And they were like, Canada? Nobody lives in Canada! It was really funny. Lumber Games, toi. Cool. So this is a book that I've been reading. Um, if you have kids, it's a great book for kids. If you have young girls and you don't want them to read only superhero comics about young girls that are either stupid, uh, Starfire, or all about the boobs, this is a great book to read. Um, all the characters are female, but they're all completely different, and that is so refreshing. Every page is a work of art. The artwork is amazing. It is funny. It is fun to read. It has, like, intellectualness to it. It has things that are educational in it. I can't say enough good about this book. Go pick it up. I gave it a 9.5. Wow. I didn't read it. <laughs> it looks great, though. It really does. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, we also picked this up. It's for free. It's uh, um, all new Young Guns, you know, Marvel Young Guns, whatever. Whatever. Okay. And so here's Rat Queens number four. Um, this is old. It's up to issue six now. I have just caught up, and I think it's a great series. It's actually fun and funny. Um, I think this guy is writing is great and spot on, and I'm very interested in reading his other work. It's uh, Peter Panzerfaust. Panzerfaust. Oh Panzerfaust. <laughs> Peter Panzerfaust. Peter Panzerfaust. Right? And uh, it's just the art is great, the characters are so funny. It's just, I don't know if this is an under radar book or how many people are actually reading it, but more people should read it. It's great. What'd you give it? Rat Queens. Um, I gave it a 8.5. 8.5, cool. Next book up is going to be Shutter number 3. What'd you think? Shutter number 3. Um, you know, when I first looked at this book, I thought, whoa, what a mess. There looks like so much stuff, and I thought it'd be difficult to read. Um, but when I read it, it was very, very charming, and I got into it right away. And, like, the art is really good in it. It's, like, one artist, but has, like, three different styles. Like, in the beginning, there's these, like, cute animal creatures type of style. And then there's, like, the regular art in it. And then there's these flashback art, which I really like, the flashback art. And, yeah. um, it's just reminding me of what a fun book this is in, in the, the whole fantastic world. And I, I, I just kept thinking, I want to see this as an animated series or a live action movie or something. Yeah. I was totally into it. This reminds me a lot of Saga in that you never really know what you're going to get because the writer and the artist are so creative. Anything could happen. Um, I will say though, this issue is worth picking up alone for the first four pages. They were so creative and so funny and so awesome. I give it a 9.0 just for those favorite four pages alone. What did you give this book? What did you give Shutter? A 9. A 9? Great. Yeah. That's because you're a robot! Number one shot. <laughs> Number one shot. <laughs> um, you know what? I picked this up as an impulse buy because uh, Shaky Kane. Um, 
I really like Shaky Kane. I, I used to think he was not a real person when he did a uh, bulletproof coffin, uh, but he that's just a alias for somebody else. But anyways, this is a weird kind of book. It it when you look at it, it doesn't look like much, and it really isn't. It's just like this little joke, you know, and it's like a, a Adult Swim skit or something like that. Um, so I sure I enjoyed the art. It was a little wacky, but it it really didn't do too much for me. Yeah, I mean it was it's fun, but I definitely am glad it's a one shot. I wouldn't read any more of it, but it was fun for for one book. So I gave it a seven point. What did you give it? Seven two. This is wildfire. Uh, Matt Hawkins, uh, maybe third book, I think he also does artifacts, and he does Think Tank, and this is a very much like a Think Tank book. It's almost like their brother and sister. Think Tank is about, you know, uh, government propaganda, government technology, and the a big brother type of privacy issue type of thing, and this is more about GMOs and genetically modified, like, plants and and food and animals yeah. and stuff like that. The idea of how do you solve world hunger without giving Yeah, and it's cancer. all based on real stuff, and which is Think Tank also, and, and then you just go a step further, what if it went here? And it yeah. does a really good job of that because it's actually very, very educational, and it's very socially conscious, but also entertaining, which is also like... Yeah, this is the first book I've read from this team. Um, I really, 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 really liked it. I thought the writing was really spot on. It didn't leave any room for like, um, well, why is this going on? Why is this going on? They really explain everything in a very easy to understand way. Um, the characters are really interesting. The science behind what they're talking about is really interesting. The art is gorgeous. Uh, I, I, I liked everything about it. It was great. What'd you give it? I gave it a 8.5. I gave it a 9.5. All right, in our last book this week we got is Exo Man of War number 25, which is not new either, but I happened to pick it up because I got Arm of Hunters number one, which just comes out of, and I'm behind this book, so I didn't read it, but I bought it because the art looks great, and I got it. Great. So that's our poll for the week. Let us know what you're picking up. If there's something that we're not reading that, oh my God, we should be because it's the most amazing thing you've ever read. Let us know in the comments down below. Um, as always, like and subscribe, and we will be back next week with more comics. We are really, really, really excited for Superman, which I think is next week. And yeah, we'll see you then. So first impression is where we um, basically read a comic, watch a... Oh my god, I can't do it! <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome! Start over. Welcome to First Impressions, my name is Carl Lee. And I'm Jason Headley. So First Impressions is where we take a comic book, movie, or a video game, and we do it, we do it, and do it, and do it! Oh my god! <laughs> and we do it, and we do it! <laughs> His name is... What? Yeah, I know, but I want to get his real full name because I think... Oh my... See? This is what's happening. I know, Isn't but... that we're gonna go forever? <laughs> well... <laughs> Look, I'm gonna cut this part out. There'll be one cut in this video, and it'll be right here while I look for this guy's name. <laughs> As I was saying, um, 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 uh, <laughs> damn it! I gave it a seven point out. and I gave it a. <laughs> I can't do this anymore. <laughs> I don't know. Seven two.